fact is, with this particular mark, you can't buy or sell. Can somebody tell me what a radio frequency chip has to do with that? A radio frequency identification is meant as what? A GPS. To find location. Where's my dog? A, girl, a sister wrote me and said, my dog has an RFID chip. I said, well, maybe he can go buy some land for you. <laughs>
So it's gonna give a, a, a it's gonna put a one mark for, for each person. If you don't receive that mark, you're gonna you're gonna have they're gonna have to cut your head. Oh yeah? Yeah. So then if, and then if you don't get that mark you will be able to, to use you know the basic the basic you know stuff like like go to, to the hospital they won't take care of you. Right. Well you have to you need you need to have the, the 666 in here. Or here. Mm. What, 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 what do you uh, believe uh, that is? Then? Uh, that's that's basically to, to be just with Satan, with Satanas. Just, have you ever heard of the RFID microchip? Yeah, the, I verify, right? Huh? The verify? Yeah, the very the, the, chip. The, the, yeah, the chip. Yeah. yeah, I heard about the. What do you, what I, you think I do about a that? document about that in, in in college, in Hostess Community College. So I speak, I spoke, I I, I spoke about it with with, the, with my professor. And then I started to, to talk to the, to the people. They didn't believe me, but I know that that's going to happen. What, what do you think that is? You, you think I think, exactly, I think that is, yeah, that's the mark of the beast, I think. I believe so, but I don't know. Hey, I'm hey not, where are you I'm, from, man? I'm from Mexico. Mexico? All right, all right, man. This is from the book, Re uh, Revelation, the 13th chapter. And, um... The 15 verse on down and it says this it says and he had power to give life unto the beast and unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed and he caused us all both small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead 17 and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name and that was from a revelation uh the 13th chapter the 15th verse to the 17th verse now the mark of the beast before you can understand the mark of the beast which which i read in the 15th verse you have to first get an understanding of who who or what the beast is now when you go to the first mention of this beast is in the book of uh daniel the seventh chapter and the um the seventh verse and it says this after this i saw in the night in the night vision the night visions I'm sorry and behold the fourth beast dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly and it had great iron teeth it devoured and break in pieces and stamped the resi residue with with the feet of it and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it and it had ten horns I'm not going to get into the beast the three beasts uh, before this beast, beast right here but if you get a chance you read it it's referring to the uh, the uh, Babylonians, the uh, Middle Persian Empire, and um, the uh, Greek the Greek Empire. And after the Greek Empire, shortly after the Roman em the Romans came into power. Now it says in the uh, eight eight verse, it says, "I considered the horns, and behold, there there came up." among them another little horn before whom there there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots and behold and this horn were, were eyes like the eyes of man and a mouth speaking great things so we know that this beast is not talking about an actual beast in the field it's talking about a system and that system is the pagan roman empire going back like 2,000 years ago now from there we're going to go into Revelation the 13th chapter and we're going to start from the top see when you go into the scriptures and get these understandings of these dark sayings in order to understand one thing you have to understand something else you have to understand the root of that thing. You have to understand the history of that thing.
uh, Revelation 13 and 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea. This is John the Revelator, which was one of the uh, apostles of uh, our Lord, Yahweh Shai. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And blasphemy is talking about when you disrespect, talk ill about somebody. In this case, as you read the scriptures, they talk ill about the Most High. It says, second verse, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet, the leopard represents Alexander, the, the creep, I call him, and his feet were like the feet of a, of, of a bear, the bear represent the Russians. Although the former beast, the ancient beast, the pagan beast, uh, Russia was not a part of that. Because when you go back to the, that beast, that fourth beast, that was the Roman Empire, which took over all the regions of, of uh, Europe, or most of it, but it didn't uh, take possession over any part of what, what we call today Russia. But the feet of the bear represents the end of something. So it's the Russians that's going to bring this system down. It's going to bring the beast down. Like I said, the leopard is Alexander, the beast is Russia, and the lion represents Great Britain, where America uh, came out of Great Britain. I'm going to read it again. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet or as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of, of a lion, and the dragon, now the word, now the dragon right here is interchangeable with the word beast in Daniel, the uh, seventh chapter. The Roman Empire is known as the, uh, the, the, the beast, and it's also known as the dragon. Let me, let me prove that uh, briefly. I'm going to go over one page. Or oh, the next chapter, the previous chapter, Revelation 13, which is Revelation 12. And I'm going to read that. And it said, And there appeared a great one in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the, and, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12, uh, 12 stars, representing the 12 tribes of Israel. It tells you in Jeremiah that the, the uh, Israel is likened unto a beautiful woman. And she, second verse, and she being with child, cry travailed in birth and pain to be delivered this is when the Messiah was about to be born and there appeared another one in heaven and behold a great red dragon that dragon is the Roman Empire like I said the word dragon in Revelation 13 is interchangeable with the word beast in Daniel um, 7 a, a dragon having seven heads same thing seven heads and uh, ten horns so we know it's talking about the same beast and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. The stars of heaven represent the Israelites as you go back up to uh, the first verse and upon a head, a crown of 12 stars. But when you go into the history, this is going back 2,000 years ago when the Roman Empire was in their power. This was actually the beginning of the Roman Empire. This was, this was, a, this was a, this was during the time of uh, 1 to about 4 BC. And different scholars uh, argue about it, right? But um, that's when he was born. Now it says, uh, And there appeared another one in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail, the Roman Empire's tail, drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth that's when that's when um the, the 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 tribes that were left in jerusalem were the tribe of judah benjamin and levi the rest of the tribes went to the other side of the world to the americas so uh, uh, quite naturally you had three tribes left so when the roman empire came on the scene it took down those three th uh, three tribes and did cast them to the earth and the dragon stood, and the dragon st uh, stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered. That was Yahweh the Messiah, for to de devour her child as soon as it was born. 
Okay, so now you get the gist of uh, the dragon also, also being known as a beast, which is a pagan Roman Empire. Well, let me go back to 13. It says, and I saw, and I saw one of the heads as if it were wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. Now it says that, I'll read it again. And I saw one of the heads as it was wounded to death. That was the Roman Empire. There was a point where the Roman Empire fell to death. And his deadly wound was healed. How was his deadly wound healed? When the European nations came back into power, and um, they, they created uh, what was called... Um, the uh, uh, NATO, all right. NATO came about um, in 19, was it 1949? 1949, and I believe they got their chart. Well, 1949 because they had a uh, a celebration of 50 years at the UN, and that was in 1999. I remember that because we spoke about it when we were out there speaking in the camp. But anyway, they celebrated uh, 50 years of the uh, of NATO. And NATO, which is uh, the acronym for North Atlantic Treaty Organization, um, are a, series, a bunch of nations, European nations, with military might that came together as one to uh, fight against the Ru uh, Russians if the Russians were to attack any one of those nations. One of the key nations of NATO is uh, the U.S., but why? Because they have a military, and they're mentioned in prophecy, and they are part of the beast. Now, when you um, bring it up to date, um, it's uh, 2013, and a couple of months it'll be 2014, and we're living in a technical world. Back during World War I, or prior to that, you use these conventional guns, now they have heat-seeking missiles. They, they, they use computers all right, um, and technology to use these mess, uh, these missiles, uh, or, or use these weapons of war. So everything is techno technological. Everything is based upon a computer. Now, the ultimate thing that they're going to do, NATO, the beast is going to do, is call a, cause the whole world to receive a mark, and that mark is the uh, mi uh, the microchip that you read about that you hear about, that you see commercials on, that certain people received for the medical records, and that all ties into the uh, so-called Obamacare uh, program. It ties all into that. So I didn't want to get too much into the, into the mark, but I wanted to cover, cover what the beast or who the beast was. Our constitutional journey did not stop then, and it must not stop now, Judge. And we'll be faced with equally consequential decisions in the 21st century. Can a microscopic tag be implanted in a person's body to track his every movement? There's actual discussion about that. You will rule on that. Mark my words before your tenure is over. Can brain scans be used to determine whether a person is inclined toward criminality or violent behavior? You will rule on that. And Judge, I need to know whether you will be a justice who believes that the constitutional journey must continue to speak to these consequential decisions, or that we've gone far enough in protecting against government intrusion into our autonomy, into the most personal decisions we make. Judge, that's why this is a critical moment. I have an uh, article from uh, entitled, These Last Days News. And it's dated February 13th, 2013. And the reason why I want to bring out this article is to introduce you, those of you who may not be familiar with this term, Mark of the Beast. Now, earlier Elder Tar went into the beast and explained um, what the beast is comprised of, what that term means. But now let's take a look at this mark that this beast is coming with. Now the word mark, I believe the Greek word there means, also means sign. So this microchip is also a sign of this beast, all right? So going back to the article, which is dated February 13, 2013, which is pretty relative, 
On March 23, 2013, the Microchip in the Affordable Care Act of 2010 will become mandatory. There's a pretty startling thing in the bill that 95% of Americans won't like. And that's one of the reasons why you'll have insurrection, because you'll have a lot of people that will uh, come against that idea of being microchipped, that idea of being of a chip being put inside of them. So that's one of the reasons why you'll have insurrection. And the Bible speaks about in the last days, there shall be sedition among men, there shall be insurrection. So reading on it says, Obama Care has a mic has a microchip implant for you. Now those of you who've been hearing that term Obama Care in the news, guess what? Part of Obama Care is you receiving a microchip, whether you want it or not. And that lends credence to the book of Revelation 13 and 16, where it is written, He causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. That lines up perfectly with Obamacare. All right, Obamacare has a microchip implant for you. The Obama health care bill includes under class two, paragraph one, section B, a class two device that is implantable. All right, a class two device that is implantable underneath the skin. All right, then on page 1004, it describes what the term data means in paragraph one, section B. In this paragraph, the term data refers to information respecting the device described in paragraph one, includes claims data, patient survey data. So this chip is, is gonna contain your information, your medical information is gonna be on that chip. Also your uh, uh, financial information. So it makes it all the more convenient for these elites that want to control you in something called a New World Order, it makes it convenient for them. All right? Uh, standardized analytic files that allow for the pooling and al analysis of data from disparate uh, data environments or disparate <coughs> data environments. Electronic health records. Electronic health records and any other data deemed appropriate by, by the secretary. As approved by the FDA, a class two implantable device is an implantable radio frequency transponder system. That's where you get the term RFID chip. For patient identification and health information. And that's the angle that they're using. They're using the angle of health, so-called health, because really the word health is from the Greek meaning whole. Now, the reason why you people, your, your health is bad is because you're not eating whole foods as prescribed by the Bible. So there really is no such thing as health. The healthcare system is a sham, it's a joke, all right? And to add insult to injury, that now they want to chip you, all right? This sort of device would be implanted in the majority of people who opt to become covered by the public health care option. And who is that? The majority of those people. You so-called Negroes, you West Indians, you Puerto Ricans, you tribes that trust in the so-called healthcare system. With the reform of the private insurance companies, and you better believe the insurance companies are in on this to make that money, many people will switch their coverage to a more affordable insurance plan. That's what, that is your, your so-called Obamacare, all right? Which, have an, which has the uh, chip prepared for you. Uh, this means the number of people who choose the public option will increase. This also means the number of people chipped will be plentiful as well. The adults who choose to have a chip implanted are the, are the lucky, yes, lucky ones in this case. Children who are born in the United States who at the time of birth is not otherwise covered under accept, ac acceptable coverage will be qualified and placed into the chip or children's, now listen to this, into the chip or children's health insurance program, which that word chip is an ac acronym for children's health insurance program. So they got it all covered, man. They want to cover you as well as your children. Can you see now why it is written in Revelation 13 and 16? He calls it all both small and great, rich and poor to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. All right. Um, 
it says will be qualified put this back on <laughs> all right um, I lost my uh, my information here get it back no worries it says will be qualified and placed into the chip or children's health insurance program what a convenient name even the article says what a convenient name these devils that's why that's why it is written of the devil of the serpent the so-called white man he was more subtle than any beast of the field all right he is very subtle in wickedness all right and this is this is an example all right with a name like chip it would seem consistent to have the chip implanted into a child they don't give a, give a damn about your children all right children conceived by parents who are truly covered under the public option will more than likely be implanted with a chip by the consent of the parent because the parents don't know any better all right e eventually everyone will be implanted with a chip now what does the scripture say eventually everyone will be implanted with a chip well let's go to revelation 13 and 16. it says and he causeth all both small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads what is that mark that mark is the chip because the greek word there is karagma which means a thing inserted now we read the definition of the class 2 device it is a device that is implantable so the words implantable and the word karagma, which means a thing inserted, they line up perfectly. So you cannot tell us that that chip is not what the mark of the beast is. And those of you that say any different, either you sell, you sold out, or you're just plain too stupid to see it, or you know, the Lord Yahweh Hashem Yashai is not dealing with you. All right. And then as you read on in the 17th verse, it says, and that no man might buy or sell. Why is that? Because contained on that device is also your financial records, as well as your health records. And no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here's wisdom. This is the 18th verse. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6, which basically simplifying that explanation basically that's showing you that the so-called white man is the devil all right which the word devil means deceiver so there it is you know uh, you know explain to you this class 2 device is an implantable device and it links up with the book of Revelation 13 and 16and Katrina, they were microchipped. Yep. My God, have mercy, Lord. That's that's serious stuff. Um, wow. I was going to tell you, if the, uh, if the parents were reluctant to hand it over, they would have arrested right there. Right there. Yeah, against the rights, against, uh, against anything that you would think was, was uh, the United States standard of, uh, okay, well, you can hold the baby, can I check it out while it's in your arms? No. You have to get the baby over because if you didn't, the federal government would uh, arrest you right on the spot yes. to get you out. And the thing about it is, since the Patriot Act is implemented, they can keep you as long as they want. Let's do this again in the future. When you read Revelation, the 13th chapter, about the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast, um, which is the microchip, that particular uh, mark also has a number. Like the scriptures say, it's a number of a man, which we're going to read that number. And the number of the man is 666. That's the devil's number, and that's uh, the devil, uh, that's this uh, number of this uh, microchip. All right, now the when book of right. Revelation 13 18 reads as such. 
Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is a number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. And uh, when you look that up in the Greek, which a lot of uh, people out there don't like to do, the 666 or 606 score and 6 is Kai Sai Stigma. All right, and uh, we're going to focus on this word stigma because it's relevant to this uh, implantable microchip. Because when you, when you look at the microchip, which has an RFID technology, what, it, what they do is they want, want to insert it into every so-called American and eventually uh, the, the world. Because, because they want to be able to track everybody and make uh, an everlasting slave of, of the uh, population of the world. Alright, so now before I go into the word stigma, I want to go to the book of Galatians chapter 6 and uh, verse 17. And this is the Apostle Paul, this is the Apostle Paul speaking. And um, this is what was written down um, 2,000 years ago. This is what he said. He said, From henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Yahweh Shai. Now, we're going to go into this um, word here, marks, you know, to uh, find out what the Greek word is and what it means. Now, the Greek word for marks is stigma. Now, the word stigma from, uh, from, from the uh, Greek Strong's Concordance 4742 is a mark pricked in or branded upon the body. So that stigma is something that you prick into the body. All right? It says, to ancient oriental usage, usage, slaves and soldiers bore the name or the stamp of their master or commander branded or pricked, cut into their bodies to indicate what master or general they belong to. And that's basically what the RFID chip is all about, or the microchip. It's all about branding people so that they can know who their owners are, which the owners would be uh, known as the international bankers, uh, known also as the so-called elites. These uh, so-called bankers that uh, rule the whole world financially. And that's who, who, uh, who are the, the hidden masters or who are the uh, uh, slave owners to whom you, you belong to if you get uh, that microchip implanted into you. It says, and there were even some devotees who stamped themselves in this way with the tokens of their gods. Now keep in mind that Paul said that he bears about in his bodies uh, the marks of Yahweh Shai. Now what type of marks were those that, that uh, Paul um, bore on his body? What type of mark was that? Well let's find out. Let's go to the book of John, the uh, 20th chapter. You know, is, is, was that, was, 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 uh, were those marks that he was talking about, was that something symbolic? It was symbolic dealing with him, but there were actual marks that were imprinted or put into the Lord's body. This is the book of St. John, chapter 20, verse 24. It says, But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Yahweh came. So when the Lord rose back from the dead, Thomas wasn't around them. So he didn't see or he didn't witness the Lord Lord's resurrection. And this is what he said. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord, but he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my fingers into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand in his side, I will not believe. Now that word print there is, is uh, from the Greek word typos, which means the mark of a stroke or blow. So it was talking about the actual hand, the, the actual nails, uh, 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 which uh, some scholars say were railroad spikes that were put into the Lord's hands. And the, the, uh, the, the, the uh, mark that he had on his side was uh, when they pierced him. You know, so those marks are actual marks, which Paul said he bore in his body. Which, when you go into the uh, Hebrew, I'm sorry, into the Greek uh, um, of that particular word in that uh, uh, scripture in the book of Galatians 6 and 17, the word there is stigma. Which I read it again, it says a mark pricked in or branded upon the body. Now when you go back into um, the book of Revelation 13 and 18, it said that the number of the beast was, uh, or the number of a man was 600, six, six score and six. Now that last six is uh, the Greek word for stigma, which is something that's implanted into you. 
Now, when you take that actual chip, that actual chip has numbers that are associated with it. So each chip is unique in the in the in the in the, in the way that each one has a separate number from another. So it's easy to identify one chip from another. It has a numbering system, which the numbering system breaks down to what's uh, uh, today called the UPC code or the universal product code. And that universal product code was uh, invented in 1973 by a man by the name of Joseph uh, Laura. And he's the one that who worked for IBM. I believe he worked for IBM. And he came up with this system on how to keep track of all these merchandise. But eventually that, 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 that uh, device that called the UPC, which is in, also inside of the uh, microchip, is used to track people. And if you, if you get stupid, they can shut your uh, device down where you won't be able to sell or you won't be able to buy, you know? So, um, so now I want to just go real quick uh, to this last precept in the book of Exodus. 21 and 5 because that's basically that's the the uh, end all be all that these international bankers want they want to imprint people with this microchip to make them a permanent slave and that's basically what what the, the whole deal is all about you know because they have all the money in the world they have all the power in the world they have everything that any man could ever wish to have and more like the scriptures say they have more than hearts could their heart could wish so what else do you want once you have the wealth and the power of the whole planet? You want power over people. You want servants. You want uh, um, uh, slaves. And what's going to bring about this slave or this total enslavement is this microchip. You know, that's why it's so uh, um, detrimental for you Israelites out there to find out what this mark of the beast is. So that you can know when it comes to avoid it and not take it. So this is Exodus 21. And our verse 2, it says, If thou buy an Hebrew servant, six years he shall serve, and in the seventh he shall go out free for nothing. Verse 5, And if the servant shall plainly say, I love my master, my wife, and my children, I will not go out free, then his master shall bring him unto the gate, unto the judges. He shall also bring him to the door, or unto the doorpost, and his master shall bore his ear through with an awl, and he shall serve him forever. And that that all, all was like a, a device. It looked like a like an ice pick almost. And it, he would take him to the door and, and run it through his ear. And that symbolized that he was a servant forever. And that's why they want to put this uh, chip into people so that they can be everlasting slaves and that they can be controlled the same way you control cattle, the same way you control horses. It's, it's basically a branding of the uh, owners uh, uh, of you the so-called American public, which eventually is going to be abroad throughout the whole world. So that's the mark of the beast that is spoken of in the book of Revelation. And that mark of the beast carries a number, which the number is six scores, uh, six score, six hundred, six hundred, six score and six. And the UPC code, which we spoke of earlier, has lines to it to distinguish each uh, individual number. And the first middle and last lines are double lines which are 666 and that's the number of this man which is the number of, of the mark of the beast the ultimate goal that these people have in mind is the goal to um, create a one world government run by the banking industry run by the bankers where and, and they're doing it in sections the, the European currency the euro and, and the European Constitution is one part of it. Now they're trying to do it in America with the North American Union, right? And they want to create a new currency called the Amero, right? And uh, the, whole, the, the whole agenda is to create a one world government where everybody has an, R, R, an RFID chip implanted in them. All money is to be um, in those chips. Right? There'll be no more cash. And this is giving me straight from Rockefeller himself. This is what they want to accomplish. And all money will be in your chips. And so, any, so not, instead of having cash, anytime you have money in your, in, your, in your chip, they can take out whatever they want to take out whenever they want to. If they say, you owe us this much money in taxes, they just deduct it out of your chip digitally. Total control. Total control. And if you're like me or you, and you're protesting what they're doing, they can just turn off your chip, and you have nothing. You can't buy food. 
You can't do anything. It's total control of the people. And that chip's connected to a database that has your purchasing records, what you do, what everything, you sell. Everything is in there, you know? And so they, they want a one world government controlled by them, everybody being chipped, all your money in those chips, and they control the chips and they control people. And you become a slave. You become a serf to these people. That's their goal. That's their intention. electronic tracking device so their commanders can monitor them. It's called Blue Force Tracking. Some law enforcement units back home have experimented with chips that give physical data about officers but don't have tracking signals. U.S. military officials say soldiers and Marines in most regular combat units in Iraq, like the Missing Soldiers Division, are not outfitted with tracking devices. One reason? The danger involved if a soldier... One option, placing a tracking microchip under a service member's skin. Former U.S. Special Operations officers tell us they believe that's being developed. Current military officials won't comment on that, Wolf. Yeah, what about the cost, Brian? Uh, is that at all a consideration? It's a big consideration. Just about every former officer I spoke with says the cost of outfitting each combat troop with a tracking device is one of the main reasons they don't have them right now. So when you speak uh, with the various special operations types and others, and I know you've been doing a lot of reporting on this, the pros and cons of having these kinds of tracking devices. What do they say, Brian? Some believe that every service member should have them. Some don't because of the risks we talk about. But others say if they can deal with the cost and pay for all of this, it is worth it not only to track missing troops, but to be able to tell friendlies from enemies on the battlefield. Brian Todd reporting for us. Uh, such devices, by the way, are not just tools for war. They're also tools that could keep all of us and all of our families safe. We saw that back in February when three mountain climbers and their dog were stranded overnight on Oregon's Mount Hood. Rescuers found them all safe by tracking their mountain locator unit, a device similar to the one seen here. Also, many... And um, the uh, mark of the beast, uh, not only do you have to know the Bible and the dark sayings of the Bible, you have to know languages outside of the English language. You know, you have certain knuckleheads out there, Israelites that, you know, claim they can... Uh... Don't let nobody try to be sick and go, rah, brother, and you go to the Greek. <laughs> <laughs> if you notice, every doctrine has to go to another language. Exactly. Every, they cannot ever explain their doctrine in English. Now, exactly. they're going to the Paleo-Hebrew, brother. Paleo. Exactly. They Watch go. out for slick-talking, brother. They're going to the Bible. And um, that's all they need. They don't have to look up words in the Greek or look up uh, words in the, the Hebrew um, or go into outside sources. The scriptures say watch as well as pray. But these are lazy Israelites. You know, guys like Nate and Johanna and the rest of those clowns out there. You know, we, we go thoroughly into the scriptures. Okay? But anyway, I would like to... Uh, Read something from the, one of the books that we uh, put out. Uh, the Mark of the Beast is the chip. And um, just to show you that you have to go into the Greek, the Hebrew, and into the Greek to get a further understanding. That's why, like I said, going back to what I said about these other Israelite groups, none of them believe that the, the Mark of the, the Beast is, is a microchip. They don't even know about the microchip. They, don't, they, don't, they have no clue as to what's going on. They don't know how. They don't know that it relates to the to, to the Obamacare, the Affordable Health Care Act, and then which m makes them say that we don't know the, the Lord might come another forty years from now. They're lost, man. They're lost. Anyway, I'm gonna read this. This is on uh, page uh, page thirty five of this book. It says, uh, and it says this, the meaning and connotation of the Hebrew and Greek words for mark is imperative for Israel to know and understand, know and understand in order to different, differentiate between the mark found in Leviticus uh, 19.28, Ezekiel 9 and 4, Romans 16 and 17, and Revelation Again, we're reading this again, Revelation 13 and 16, as well as, as well as be able to identify and recognize the RFID chip 
R, let me say something on the RFID. The RFID is an um, acronym for uh, Radio Frequency Identification. Now, Nate had did a, a uh, video on YouTube where he kind of laughed at the fact that uh, the mark of the beast uh, is a chip. And he said that it, it represented co uh, cooperation. It didn't represent a man, a uh, man, a woman, or child. So the subject is with this particular mark, you can't buy or sell. Can somebody tell me what a radio frequency chip has to do with that? A radio frequency identification is meant as what? A GPS. The find location. Where's my dog? A, girl, a sister wrote me and said, my dog has an RFID chip. I said, well, maybe he can go buy some land for you. And furthermore, he said that, uh, uh, what is a RFID? What is what is what is a RFID? What is a RFID system? And he said it's basically a, uh, a GS a GPS device. Where can I find my dog? Then he made a joke that uh, one of the sisters had a dog that got the chip, and she put the chip in the dog. And um, she had told as you know went to Nate and said um, my dog has an RFID chip what does that mean and he said well that's good maybe maybe a dog can buy some lamb for you all right and they laughed it off you know stupid people laugh at stupid things you know and nate is a stupid ass anyway um uh reading off reading on i'm sorry it says uh, able to identify and recognize the rfid chip as being the mark of the beast. The Hebrew used in uh, Ezekiel 9 and 4 is the Hebrew word thawa, which means sign, mark, or signal. And the Greek used in Romans 16 and, um, 16 and 17, it says 6 and 17, but it should be 16 and 17, is uh, skopeo, which is a Greek word which means to look at, observe, behold. The mark in Revelation 13 and 16 from the uh, Greek word karagma uh, co uh, corresponds and cor cor uh, correlates to the mark in Leviticus 19 and 28, which is the word, the Hebrew word kwai kwai, as the mark of the beast is in keep it down as a mark as a, as of of the beast as a sin or transgression a form uh, a aforementioned law uh, revelation of leviticus are uh, evidently and undoubtedly associated associating the mark with the puncturing of one's flesh should one choose to receive the mark also known as the RFID uh, chip, they will find themselves in severe violation of the Mosai's law on multiple accounts. All right? Now, like I said, I just read, and I checked, and I checked this out myself on the blue letter. Uh, when you look up the word uh, in, in Leviticus, and you look up the word uh, uh, mark there, the word there is in fact kwai kwai. When you go to uh, Ezekiel, matter of fact, I'm gonna go to that. I'm gonna go to Ezekiel, the ninth chapter, and I'll start the fourth verse. It says, and the Lord said unto him, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and said a mark, mark, upon the heads of, of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Now that word, now that word there for mark is not the word, the same word for quai quai. All right? That, that word mark um, basically is something that the Most High is gonna put on his chosen elect. You know, 
there's gonna be like a marker, for lack of a better term, on that person. It's not, it's not gonna be the most high, it's not gonna put a physical mark on you. Now when you look that word up, as I said, the word there is thawa. When you look up that Hebrew word thawa, the, the Hebrew word thawa means exempt from judgment. Because when you go back to uh, Ezekiel 8 chapter, it spoke about how it was given to uh, Ezekiel by the Most High through the angels, that or the angel, that uh, you see all the wickedness that Israel is doing. So now this is what I'm going to do to them. Because the Lord said that there are certain men that um, are following my laws and have not turned their back uh, to me. But the majority of my people have uh, turned their back and um, w uh, you had the women weeping for Tammuz. It tells you in Jeremiah that the women were making cakes to the queen of heaven. And, and, and our people do that secretly. So the Mosai said, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna separate them that sigh and cry and then, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to destroy the rest of the Israelites. And it's talking about Israelites. All right? Now, I want to also go into this uh, briefly. I just want to re read these scriptures. And um, the first scripture is Revelation 14 and 8 to 11. Revelation and these scriptures speak about the ones of you that accept this microchip which is the mark of the beast and this is what's this is what's gonna happen to you Revelation 14 I'm gonna start at the 8th verse and it says this it says and there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, which is America, is fallen, that great city, because she have, she, she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of a fornication. Um, that's spiritual fornication. And a ninth verse, and the third angel uh, followed them saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast, that's the modern beast, NATO, the UN system, the EU, the uh, Obamacare is a part of that system. Uh, worship the beast and his image and receive his mark, all right, in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Now that's talking about what? When this system goes down, the Lord is coming back uh, with, with his majestic angels. And the, and the angels, and the Lord and the angels, when they come back in the so-called UFOs, they, you, you can't put a, a number on them. There's going to be an innumerable amount of angels in the sky that's going to cover the skies of America and around the world. Matthew 24 says to cover the four corners of the earth. And the ones of you that have received that mark, guess what? You're not going to be beamed up into them ships and you're going to be destroyed by this thermonuclear destruction from the Russians and possibly the Chinese and the laser beams that's going to come out of those ships led by the Lord Yahweh Shai and his angels. So, um... You know, I mean, all we can do is give you this truth and you can either accept it or reject it. You know, this, uh, you know, we're, we're basically warning you people out there, uh, mainly you Israelites, uh, that once, once they put this uh, technology out there, which they have the technology out there, but once they go to implant it into actual people, you're supposed to not take it. You're not supposed to accept it. You know, you're supposed to uh, trust in, in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls God and, and, uh, and Jesus. All right? So, you know, that, uh, this is the reason why you have to put on your nationality. This is the reason why you have to come back to who you are. So that you can know 
or what to do in these times because there's, uh, there's going to be a trying time coming once the market of beast uh, is fully pushed out there once they go to implementing this uh, RFID chip or the microchip you're going you're gonna to be forced to take it and it's not just going to be like all right, either you accept it or, or, or not it's going to be you, you're going to be forced to do it you know it could be at the at the end of a, of a, a barrel of, of a gun it could be at the end of a um, um, a, a guillotine you know it could be at the end of a sword firing squad fire whatever you know so you're not supposed to take it this is why this is written this is uh, Isaiah 33 and 6 and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation the fear of the Lord is his treasure because the hour of temptation is coming you know and the hour of temptation is gonna grab a lot of people you know by by uh uh, as the scriptures speak about you, how shall I come in as a thief in the night? It's going to grab you unexpectedly, you know. So it behooves you in these times now, before this thing actually comes, which is here, but it just hasn't been fully implemented, for you to take heed, you know, so that when it does come, you can be prepared. Now, this is the book of Revelation, chapter three, verse eleven. I'm sorry, not eleven. Uh, I started uh, ten. It says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Okay, because this is going to be a trial. So now, if you take this chip, as we read in the scripture in the Revelation 14, you're going to be destroyed by the angels, by Yahushai, by the angels, by the missiles, by the fire that's coming. You know, you're going to be destroyed by, uh, some of you are going to be destroyed by famine. Some of you are going to be destroyed by, by, by storms. Some of you are going to be destroyed by beasts. Some of you are going to be destroyed in these race riots. You know, and ultimately, uh, uh, the majority of you that's in the, on the swords of America that are not part of the elect, uh, which are you so-called Negroes, West Indians, uh, Puerto Ricans, Haitians, Dominicans, you Israelites You're going to be destroyed uh, ultimately if, if uh, you take that uh, chip You know, because right now you do whatever you, you got to do uh, to get welfare If they tell you you got to get wear a stamp on your forehead uh, to get welfare, you'll do that Alright, so now I'm going to go Because uh, all throughout the book of Revelation it speaks about this mark and this, this is not just a thing, oh, it's just Christianity or an embargo or, or just some insignificant thing that you don't have to worry about. This is a very uh, a prevalent um, prophecy. This is something you have to look for. Look for. That's why Yahweh Shai said, watch as well as pray that you may be able to escape these things. Matter of fact, before I read these, these scriptures here, I'll go to the book of um, uh, St. Luke real quick. Uh, this is the book of St. Luke. Chapter 21 and verse um, 34. It says, And take heed to yourselves, lest any at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that they come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. So it's going to come, uh, even though we're out there speaking and teaching and, and breaking it down, precept upon precept, it's still going to be as a snare to a lot of you people because you're not going to be expecting it. It says, Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So when they go to implement this chip, you're going to be already armed in your mind to say, No, I can't take that chip because if I take that chip, I'm going to be destroyed. But now, on the other hand, the people that are going to take the chip, the reason why they're going to take it is because they're not part of the elect and they've been blinded. So, and they've been blinded by this devil. Because this devil, the way he paints things, he don't come like you think of the devil, you think of a, a, this big horrible uh, uh, creature. You know, somebody that's the devil, you think that they come like a horrible creature, like a, you know, like a maniac. But the devil's going to come nice, he's going to come uh, uh, smooth. You know, and that's how these devils are coming. Oh, don't worry about it. You know, you, the, 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 you could take this RFID chip. It'll help you. It'll have your medical records on it. It'll have your financial records on it. Uh, you don't have to worry about uh, identity theft. You don't have to worry about uh, credit cards being lost or your money be, being stolen or you stuck up for your, for your money because it'll be all on this chip that'll be inserted inside of you and you'll have, you won't have to worry about no more cards, you won't have to worry about nothing. You know, if you want to open up your car, you got to do is swipe your hand on your car and the car will open. So they have everything set up, but it's all, like, they, like the scriptures say, their words are smoother than butter, but war was in their heart. 
Uh, this is the, the, the book of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. And the microchip, which is the mark of the beast, is, is a part of the gospel. And it's lost to a lot of people out there. Why? Because the God of this world has blinded the minds of those people out there. And who's the God of this world? Lucifer, the so-called white man. The, the Illuminati, the international bankers, the so-called uh, ruling elite. These are the gods of this world. And these are the people out there that are blind in your minds. It says, But if our gods will be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, and whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Least the light of the glorious gospel of Yahweh Shai, who is the image of the Most High, should shine unto them. Because if this word shines unto you, you're going to be, you're going to see, you're going to believe, and you're going to be awoke, and you're going to deny taking that, that microchip. Because once you take it, that's it. Like you had some clowns out there talking about that the Apostle Paul had the mark of the beast at one time, and now he doesn't have it anymore. If you take the mark of the beast, there's no way for you to put it off. There's no way for you to uh, take it off of you. Okay? So the, the Apostle Paul didn't have the mark of the beast. Because if he did, or if the, the mark of the beast was Christianity, everybody out there is, is a, a, a part of Christianity or the Roman Catholic Church in some way or the other. The scriptures tell you if you take it, you're not going to be able to put it off. So now, going to the book of uh, Revelation 15... And two, this will go into it even further. Revelation chapter 15, verse 2. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast. Now this glass mingled, this sea of glass mingled with fire, that's going to be the elect in the chariots with the world calls UFOs looking down through the ozone layer, which is that sea of glass, down into the earth, and the earth is going to be on fire. America is going to be totally on fire. The land of Israel and certain other parts of the world are going to be on fire. They're going to be up there. And they got the victory over what? Over the beast. It says, and over his image and over his mark. Which is what? The mark of the beast. The RFID uh, uh, or the uh, uh, radio frequency identification or the uh, microchip. It says, and over the number of his name. Which is what? 666. Which the last six is stigma. Okay? Stand on the sea of glass having the harps of the Most High. Why? Because they overcame and they didn't accept it. Why? Because they were the elect. They put on, they took the oil, which is the knowledge of the Bible. They had the oil on. And when, when, when these things came, the, the, uh, the, the oil sparked that, that candle in their brain, or in their mind, or in their spirit. And they didn't take it. You know, whether they got their head chopped off or whether they, they, they were, uh, um, they were uh, um, um, tortured or whatever the case may be. They didn't accept the mark of the beast. It says, uh, this is uh, the book of Revelation 16 and 2. It says, And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. And that's talking about, about what? The nuclear destruction. That's going to be that lake of fire and the judgment for those that take this uh, chip. Uh, this is 16 and 10. And the first and the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat, seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of dark, darkness, and they gnawed their tongue for pain. Why? Because of the mark of the beast. Um, and the ver last scripture here, Revelation 19 and 20. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. So basically, the Lord used this devil to uh, put out this mark or this RFID chip, this microchip. Um, he he uh, used the technology, he deceived the people, he got the people to be destroyed, but eventually he's going to be destroyed also. And the international bankers will be going into slavery uh, uh, in the kingdom of heaven. There's guilt and everyone in the guilt feels that the response of the city to this tragedy was um, beyond anything that we should accept as a society. Um, uh, during the whole week after the marathon bombing, uh, the city felt almost like being under martial law. And especially Thursday evening and Friday, 
uh, we feel that martial law was imposed on the city without uh, going through regular Media procedure. reports have been stating uh, instructions, relaying instructions to Massachusetts residents uh, to stay in their homes and to not let anybody in unless they have clearly identified themselves as police. To shed some more light on this ongoing investigation and lockdown of Boston. Apparently we're not the ones harboring a fugitive. Yeah, this is our garage right now. What the hell? This is what we woke up to this morning. Yeah, this is from the book, The Mark of the Beast is the Chip. That, uh, the, well, this is our book that we uh, put out. And um, I'm going to read some ex excerpt from uh, uh, the chap chapter 6, The Mark and Martial Law. Because what's going to cause a lot of people to receive this mark too there's going to be a number of people that's going to receive it, openly receive it, to get their food stamps, their WIC, and uh, so forth. Um, and there's some that will know the scriptures and know to stay away from it, but they're going to kind of have a gun put to them. They're going to have their backs uh, put to the wall, okay? And then they're going to uh, succumb to it and wind up taking it so they can eat. That's why the scripture said in Matthew 24, he that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. Because things are going to change in this society. Anyway, it says here, and I'm going to jump around. It says, uh, uh, one instrument by which the RFID chip will be become, um, RFID chip will become mandatory is through martial law. Martial law is the, uh, imposition of uh, military rule whereas armed um, military troops and soldiers replace civil authorities now you're saying you're crazy that can never happen in america well guess what it happened in america uh, about three three and a half months ago up there in boston over that bombing attack with this with the uh uh what's the name of the chest chechen uh rebels they said the one guy and his younger brother and um, th that was during the uh, finish line of the uh, the, uh, marath the Boston Marathon. And what wound up happening, they, they wound up, a couple of days later, they wound up chasing them down and finding them. And supposedly they killed one and the other one escaped. And they had, they had the uh, Boston police, they had uh, the state troopers, they had uh, the National Guard, uh, they had SWAT teams. They had, everybody was dressed in military um, regalia. And they were all loaded, loaded to the, uh, armed to the teeth, all right? So don't tell me that that can't happen in America because it already happened in America almost about four months, three and a half, four months ago. It says, uh, uh, whereas armed military troops and soldiers replace civil authorities, faculty, and personnel upon uh, uh, the... Um, the the criminant the 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 criminant of martial of martial law curfews are imposed uh, accompanied by the uh, indefinite uh, sup uh, suspension of of civil law excuse me civil rights and habeas corpus permitting unlawful detention keep that in mind unlawful detention that is uh, detention lacking sufficient cause of evidence martial law is declared during social unrest that was the situation of social un unrest civil uprising 
when they cut off the money, if they decide to uh, default on the uh, debt of the government, uh, payment of the government that the government's supposed to pay uh, for these uh, loans, that your welfare is going to be cut off, your Section 8 is going to be cut off, your food stamps going to be cut off, your WIC's going to be cut off. People that were, were supposed to receive pensions, that's going to be cut off. Your parks are going to remain closed, okay? It says, I'm going to read this again. Declaring, de declared during social unrest, civil uprising and riots, uh, Second uh, Ezra 15, verses 15 and 19, and during major nat uh, natural disasters, uh, wherein it is given the, le the legal construct of a state of emergency because all they have to do is uh, declare a state of, the, of emergency and uh, when you declare a, ma a state of emergency you um, you uh, 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 you uh, do away with the constitution or you suspend the constitution either the whole constitution or parts of it it says uh, disasters wherein it is Given the legal construct of a state of emergency, officially the U.S. has a mandated martial law under Section 1031 of the National Defense Authorization Act, which was signed by, uh, by uh, Barack Obama, which he said he wasn't going to sign it, and he wound up signing it. He was in Hawaii, I believe, and it was on New Year's Eve when everybody was partying and reveling, all right? Uh, acronym NDAA authorize U.S. armed forces to perform law enforcement duties and functions on U.S. soil, which happened in Boston. Congressman Ron Paul recently stated during an interview with radio talk show host uh, Alex Jones discussing NDAA that it is literally legalizing martial law, and it is, it's martial law. You got the Patriot Act in place, and you got the NDAA, where they can uh, snatch up uh, U.S. citizens indefinitely it said that it is a uh, uh, literally legalizing martial law section uh 1021 of the ndaa allows the government to uh indefinitely detain u.s citizens held by the u.s military all right that that throws a uh, uh, posse comunitatis out the window under the law of war because they're going to the government is going to declare war on the u.s citizens uh, without trial and have them exiled and deported. It says the NDAA via martial law is one method by which Edom, the Edomites, will introduce the chip that it that is by force of the sword. NDAA ensures pre, uh, previous legislation such as Obamacare. Like I said, this whole chip is going to is going to be implemented through the Obama Health Care Care Plan. All right, design or what we call the Obama Health Care Plan, are designed to push push the chip, and is in accordance with prior legislation that will enable the government to proceed with martial law. For instance, the Patriot Act. I mentioned that the uh, Project Megiddo. Uh, we spoke about that, reported by the FBI targeting Hebrew Israelites. Okay? Now, in this, in this, uh, the NDAA section uh, 1021, and this is what it says. And I'll read parts of it. So, as I said before, as I've been saying for the longest, you got Israelite clowns out there saying that we're going to be here for the next 40 years, 30 years, 50 years, you know. Alex, he said that uh, we can be here for another thousand years. Shows how much he knows. But, <laughs> but anyway, um, get into this. And I'm going to get into this brief. Uh, this is uh, NDAA section uh, 1021 and 1022. A scary uh, potential, right? And it says this. I'm going to just read parts of it. It says uh, section 1021. A Congress affirms that the authority of, of the president to use all necessary and appropriate force 
uh, pursuant to the authorization for use of military force includes the author authority for the armed forces of the United States to detain covered persons pending uh, disposition under the law of war. When you read into it, if you read the whole thing, the whole section, 20, uh, 10, 21, and 10, 22, it's talking about U.S. citizens. And that's how they're going to push, that, that's one way they're going to push the, the mark of the beast or the uh, microchip or the very chip or the, however you want to call it because now they're being nice to you now they want you to take eventually take it by way of the uh, Obamacare but the ones they already know that people in the Bible Belt the Patriot movement you know people that follow Alex Jones certain so-called born-again Christians and certain Israelites know about that so once they get the weak ones to receive that mark, now they're going to have to uh, use the military to uh, make the rest of you receive that mark. So it's high time to wake out of sleep.